Okay, you have hello. You have learned the alternating current through a pure resistor. So now we continue with the alternating current through an inductor. So for this figure, it shows that um, an inductor with inductance L. So this one is with inductance L. Is connected to an AC uh, voltage. So we know that AC voltage is always changing in current. Means the current is always changes due to the AC current. Okay. So because of this, every instance of time the current is changing. So an EMF is induced in inductor. So in other words that that is an EMF induced inside these inductors according to the previous self-inductance phenomena. Okay, which is L equal to negative L equal to di dt. So and we know that there is a voltage supply through the inductor which is equal to V of your apply voltage okay so by using Kirchhoff second law which we know that the algebra sum of the uh, Algebraic sum of the EMF is equal to zero, which means that E minus, sorry, the applied voltage across the inductor minus the induced EMF will be equal to zero. Okay, so we will get this equation. So rearrange this, V will be equal to L D I D T. Okay, now, so we know that for an alternating current, we may write V is equal to V naught sine omega t. So now we want to derive AC current starting from V equal to V naught sine omega t. So we want to find I the equation the equation of your current that flowing through your inductor. So in other words, you want to derive it from here. Okay, there are several ways to uh, derive your equation, but now I show you the first way, which we started from so V equal to V naught sine omega t. Okay. So according to here, we know that V is equal to L di dt and V is equal to V naught sine omega t. So substitute this equation into here, we will get V naught equal to sine omega t equal to L di dt. So move the dt to the left hand side, so we will get V naught sine omega t dt equal to L di. So in order to uh, eliminate your D, so we integrate these equations. So when we integrate both sides, so integrate this with respect to T, so we will get negative V naught cos omega T per omega. So I believe that you know how to derive this, uh, integrate this one. So this one you integrate with respect to i, so we will get L i. Okay, rearrange this one. So putting your i on the left hand side, the other one on the right hand side, so we get negative v naught cos omega t per omega l. So can you see this one? So we have this we will have almost reached what we want. So we know that 
your instantaneous current can be written in this way. So this one is a cosine equation. So I can be written as negative I0 cos omega t. So by comparing these two equations, by comparing these two equations, we note that I0 is actually V0 per omega up. Okay, in other words, we have derived it into here. So in other words, we have when we have alternating current through inductor, we will get V is equal to V0 sine omega t and your equation for phase I is negative I0 negative I0 cos omega t. So what is this mean? This means that your phaser is starting from this one is your V and this one is your I. So in other words, your V leads I 90 degree or pi per 2 radian. Okay, so this gives meaning that whenever there is an alternating current that pass through a pure inductor, a pure inductor. So, the conclusion is we will get this one. Okay. V leads I by 90 degree or pi per 2 radian. And your equation can be written if you are starting from V equal to V naught sine omega t, then you will get I equal to I naught cos omega t. Okay. Let's say you don't want to use this way. So there are second way to derive your equation. So now I want to show you to derive AC voltage starting from I equal to I naught sine omega t. So if you don't want to start, let's say your question asks you to start uh, from I equal to I naught sine omega t rather than this one. So we can start from I equal to I naught sine omega t. So use these two, comparison between these two. So we have this one, V equal to L di dt for, a, for the equation that you derive from, you get from your alternating current through an inductor. So this is your first equation. The second equation is your I naught sine omega t. Okay, so put your I, I in, in this equation so you will get V is equal to L, differentiate your I naught sine omega t with respect to t. So how do you differentiate this one? So you just differentiate, so I naught is in a constant, so you can just bring it forward, your constant just bring forward so you derive this sine omega t. So when you derive sine omega t, you will get L I naught. This one will get omega cos omega t. So in other words, when you compare with your previous knowledge, so you know that V is equal to V naught cos omega t. Okay? So can you see this one? So in other words, V will be equal to L I naught omega. So it's actually same as this one. You see the comparison? It's almost the same. But this one is in terms of I naught and this one is in terms of V naught. Okay? Sorry, your V naught. Okay? So if V naught is L I naught omega, so in other words, when you have this one, I equal to I naught sine omega t. You start from here. This is your initial positions of your currents. So you will get your initial positions of your voltage as V naught cos omega t. If you look at this one, your phase diagram is something like this. This one is your I. This one is your V. So here still the same. V leads I 90 degree by 90 degree or pi per 2 radian. Okay, 
So it's just the same, but the way to derive is using different weight. So there are two, another two ways, another two ways. Okay, I want you to do the first one. I want you to derive, derive AC current starting from V equal to V naught cos omega t. Means you will get your I. The second way, you derive your AC voltage starting from V naught. Eh, sorry, I equal to I naught cos omega t. Okay. So do this two derivation and show your phasor diagram and show is it and prove that and prove that your V leads I ninety degree or pi per two radian. Okay. Now there are some correction in your textbook. So please turn to page two nine seven. Okay, if you look at your page, your textbook. 297 and you will realize that this is actually wrong you should correct it into i equal to so there is a negative sign here means that it's actually i equal to negative i cos omega t rather than positive value is actually negative i cos omega t uh, clear Okay, now continue. Okay, and because uh, there is some still have some corrections in your page two nine eight. Okay, for your textbook page two nine eight. Hey, look at your page textbook. So this one, this diagram already told you that your V leads your uh, I by 90 degree. So you have your graph from V is a sine graph. Can you see this one? It's a sine graph. And your I is actually negative cos graph, which is your first derivation that I show you just now. Okay, so this one, okay, for this one, is your first derivation facial diagram. Okay, there's some correction here. If you look carefully, there is a this is actually sine, not cos. Means you here is actually V equal to V naught sine omega t. And for your I is I equal to negative I, I not cos omega t, not sine omega t. Okay, I believe that you can read it your own. So Remember, for a pure inductor, V leads I by 90 degree. And for your resistor, it's actually in phase. Okay, for your previous lessons, you have le already learned alternating current through a resistor, V and I is in phase. Yeah. So you have noticed that just now, Sorry. I naught is equal to V naught per omega L. Okay, rearrange this equation. You have omega L is equal to V naught per I naught. Here, if you have a resistor, you call this one as a resistance because V per I is a resistor. But when the circuit is through an inductor, when a circuit is through an inductor, this value, this value, we call it as reactance. Okay, uh, I repeat. Uh. When the circuit is alternating current through a resistor, a resistor, this value we call it at resistance. 
but when you come to the alternating current through an inductor this we have a specific name for it which is reactants so we denote this reactant as SL for inductor reactants through inductor so your reactants through inductor denote as XL which is given by V0 divided by I0 in other words is equal to omega L so remember omega is your angular velocity or angular frequency And because omega is equal to 2 pi f, so this reactance through inductor will be equal to 2 pi f L. Okay, by, by analyzing these two equations, you will notice that your inductance is directly proportional to your omega and your inductance and your reactance is directly proportional to your frequency so you will get your graph as this one your reactance is directly to f and directly proportional to your omega Okay. means that when your omega increase your frequency increase your reactance will increase so what is actually reactance so you know that reactance is actually almost the same with resistor right resistance just there is a some specific definition which your reactance is the opposition to the current by an inductor rather than by re, uh, by your resistor means that that is a how well it opposed the current by your inductor okay so you can refer to your textbook so this one is your definition and this is your keywords okay so look at this one so you know that XL is equal to V0 per I0. Okay, or you can say that I0 is equal to V0 per XL. So XL is equal to 2 pi FL, V0 is equal to omega LI. So V0 per 2 pi FL. So in other words, your current is inversely proportional to your F or your current is inversely proportional to your angular frequency. So you will get this graph. So when your... Sorry. When your frequency increases, your I will in decreases. Okay. Okay, now. So, how to derive your instantaneous? power and maximum power of inductor okay so let's go so we know that instantaneous power which is p equal to vi still vi so through just now we know that so we are using this one so we use this one or if you don't like this one you can use this one so p is equal to vi so we will get this one okay. 
B naught sine omega t times negative i naught cos omega t. Okay, so you have V naught sine omega t and negative i cos omega t. So combine these two, you will get V naught i naught sine square omega t. So negative. Okay, this negative you can just ignore it when you do your calculations because negative just show the power is being stored or being released by the circuit okay so in other words this one will be equal to v naught i naught sine square omega t sorry not sine square omega t uh, yeah. it's sine cos omega t sine omega t cos omega t sorry i do the mistakes sine omega t cos omega t so by the um trigo the rule of uh the law of your trigo so you know that sine omega t cos omega t is actually equal to half sine to omega t so you can be written your equation in this way simplify it so you will get v naught i naught sine to omega t per 2 so this equation is your instantaneous power okay so what if your maximum power so maximum power is when your side to so how to get get your maximum power maximum power is when your sine to omega t equals one so in other words your maximum power will be equal to v naught i naught per two okay so if you want to derive it in terms of VRMS and IRMS, still remember V0 is equal to VRMS square root 2 and I0 is IRMS square root 2. So by combining these two equations, so you, V will get 2 VRMS IRMS because this one square, you will remove the square root. So per 2, so cancel out, we will get VRMS, IRMS. Okay? So in other words, your maximum P can be equal to V0, per I, v not I0 not per 2 or VRMS times your IRMS. Okay. Now, so you can refer this diagram in your textbook. So if you are starting from just now, because I show you the power is starting from this sign and negative cost. So your textbook is actually show you uh, this one rather than I use this one. The textbook show you this one. So if occurred, if based on this one, so based on this one, it's still the same. The working is just the same, but. The graph is a little bit of difference. So you will get this graph for your, if you derive it from here. So you will get this types of graph. So you note that, so the power is actually smaller than your, the peak. The maximum power is smaller than your maximum V and maximum I. And you note that here 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 so when the v and i meets it has a maximum power okay and when your i is in maximum so there is no power the instantaneous instantaneous power is zero so okay since here, if you look at this equation and this diagram, this graph, so you will notice that for a positive power, so this positive power means that energy is stored inside an inductor. 
okay the energy store in an inductor which is equal to half l i square you have already learned in your previous chapter is stored in a in a form of magnetic field okay so for a negative power means the energy is released to the circuit okay and the net energy due to the net energy uh, between the absorb and release are the same because what you absorb what the inductor absorb let's say it absorb 10 joule of heat it will release back 10 joule to the circuit so this net flow of energy is zero thus your net energy absorbed by the inductor for one complete cycle is zero okay so why your mean power is zero so I'll show you this way okay now look carefully okay um so i move it here for your mean power so you know that your power is equal to v naught i naught sine 2 omega t per 2 okay so but this one is your mean power okay you will get p is equal to v naught i naught per 2 because this is constant so you can just uh, bring it out and you will get your mean of sine 2 omega t so mean sine omega t is the integration of 0 to pi uh, 1 per pi sine 2 omega t d omega t so omega t i usually use theta because you can represent your omega t using theta so this one when you integrate you will get zero so in other words when this becomes zero so your mean power will be zero because zero times anything will become zero so your mean power for an inductor for AC current through an inductor is equal to zero. Okay. Next, we will show you the energy that stored in an inductor. So we know that E inside an inductor is equal to half L I square. Okay. So let's say your I is equal to I naught sine omega t of course if you don't like to use sine omega t you can use cos omega t huh? it depends on the question given and it depends on the wavefront that generate by your current and also by your voltage so it depends on the wavefront so let's say your i is equal to i naught sine omega t so this equation will become I not square sine square omega t. Okay, so your E for the instantaneous energy that store inside an inductor will be equal to half L I square I not square sine square omega t. So if you want a maximum E store in an inductor. If you want to find the maximum E store in an inductor, so this sine square omega t have to be equal to one. So in other words, it's L half L I naught square. So this one, your I naught square is your maximum current. So if you notice that when it is maximum current, so your V will be minimum so maximum current will cause maximum e when v equals zero you will have maximum e okay so clear so this Remember, 
from here we know that maximum e is when maximum i and v equals zero then you will get maximum e okay so that's it for today uh, we have finished this subtopic i mean your 18.2 which i know you will feel sad because you have to complete your exercise in page 301 okay so remember to finish your exercise 18.4 and also don't forget to derive your ac current starting from v equal to v naught cos omega t and also derive your ac voltage starting from i equal to i naught cos omega t so there are two homeworks given to you please complete it and if you have any question please ask so that's it for today mm, remember to give a like and subscribe okay thank you see you tomorrow